So um, as part of this year's Legacy Day, um, we were looking at honoring uh, African-American uh, community service organizations. And so the ALTS, um, BPOE ALTS lodges in, in town were one of the groups that were identified as part of, you know, the community service. And the debutante cotillion balls was one of the major activities that the ELTS participated in each year. And so the debutante exhibit kind of grew out of that focus on community service. And um, Chesapeake Heartland had already started collecting um, some photos and I think they may even have a video of one of the cotillion balls. And so as part of the Legacy Day, uh, we came up with the idea of doing a larger focus on debutantes. And most Legacy Days and most of our um, look at history, there's not often that we have an opportunity to focus on females or African-American females. And so I know there were escorts as part of it, but we wanted to really just focus on the debutantes and, and highlight that. Okay. So debutantes were actually selected um, by the, the ELTS organization. So there's, um, the ELTS had a female side star temple and uh, a male group, uh, Bay City Lodge. So each of the groups would make selections, one or two from each of their groups. Um, debutantes were seniors in high school. So that was um, all of them, it was their senior year. And they were usually um, selected based on academic performance and community service. So it was a, a way of, you know, kind of congratulating and propelling it, those young ladies who were already achieving to give them uh, a higher honor. Um, and, so and one other thing I guess I can add is, um, so in addition to, so the exhibit really grew out of a collaboration between the, the Star Center, Chesapeake Heartland Collection, and Sumner Hall. So the, um, the exhibit is focused on the debutantes of Kent County. However, the Kent County debutantes were part of a larger group of debutantes that participated in Cotillion that came from um, other areas in Maryland, Delaware, and the District of Columbia. So um, each year, Kent would send, Kent County would send two to three or four debutantes to the national, uh, to the tri-state cotillion that was held in Baltimore. And one of the other kind of interesting things about the, the debutante cotillions is that the young ladies um, had to go through about six to eight weeks of uh, training, so to speak, um, before the balls actually took place. So you, you, you were, um, we'd have to travel to Baltimore almost every Saturday for six to eight weeks. And you would learn um, not only waltzing and dancing steps, um, you would learn about etiquette and, and those types of things. And one of the, I think, from my perspective, the hardest things was learning that curtsy. So every debutante had to, uh, was being introduced to society, so to speak. And so you had to walk down the aisle. You were escorted to a certain point and then you walked alone down the aisle, and at the end of that aisle, 
you perform the curtsy to the audience. And that was one of the highlights of the ball to see these young ladies. And, and uh, that was probably one of the hardest, <laughs> hardest parts. One, it's, it's nerve wracking, you know, being there alone and then having to perform the curtsy and get back up and I fall and all those things. So. Were you a debutante? Yes, I was a debutante. You didn't tell me that part in the beginning. <laughs> Yes, I was a debutante. I'll, I'll point out some pictures later. <laughs> 1971. So the, the first um, Kent County debutantes, the first one, uh, ladies that participated was 1964. Um, Cheryl Wilson, Saunt, now Cheryl Saunders, and uh, Sharon Jones were the first two uh, Kent County debutantes. And the cotillions um, continued. I, the research that I did shows continue, they continued to 2008. Because the debutante cotillions were real community affairs, community events. Um, it drew on kind of the best of our community. And it was, Many of the young ladies that served as debutantes weren't wealthy, and so they they depended on their larger family to support their efforts um, in becoming a, a debutante. And even though the men aren't highlighted in the exhibit, many of the the young men who served as escorts also got a lot out of being part of the cotillions. And I think I said the cotillions were mainly in Baltimore at the Lord Baltimore Hotel. And in doing my research, I found that the Lord Baltimore was one of the few hotels that over, uh, that bypassed the segregation um, rules at the time about having African Americans uh, stay at their hotel. And I think they started back like 1958, 1960. So I think that's one of the reasons the Lord Baltimore was, became the site for a lot of these cotillion events. So we're, uh, Sumner Hall is hosting uh, a fundraising event on um, Saturday, November 30th at Maneri Stream. And the debutante exhibit will be on display at that event. And um, we wanted to uh, bring the exhibit to the community instead of just having the community having to come to Sumner Hall to experience the exhibit. Uh, we wanted to take an opportunity to bring the exhibit uh, to the community and um, expose them to, uh, to kind of the aspects of the debutante ball. Um, one of the things that I've experienced since the exhibit opened is just the, the amount of joy that people seem to get when they see the exhibit. They either know one of the ladies or more, some of the ladies that are part of the exhibit. They may have gone to school with them. Um, many people weren't even aware that the debutante cotillions were even happening or had been happening, you know, uh, for this number of years. And so it's, it's always some sort of uh, joyful aspect that comes out of people that visit the exhibit. So we wanted to take that and expose the larger community to it. The exhibit will continue to be open at Sumner Hall through the end of the year. So once we leave the event, it will return to Sumner Hall until the end of the oh. year. I call the, the exhibit Pride Without Prejudice. And I thought that was important because um, when I think about 
serving as being, being a debutante and serving as a debutante. It's one of the few times in, I think, a young black girl's life that you didn't have to, to worry about being judged, um, especially by sort of the beauty criteria. Um, it wasn't a competition. It was celebrating kind of your excellence. And so it was a very prideful kind of occasion. And you didn't have to worry about your race or, or racism or segregation. You know, all of those things were existing, but this cotillion was a time to have that pride without worrying about prejudice.